Assalamualaikum. Hi guys. Now we are going to continue for the next video about half life. You should know how to define the half life, how to determine the order of reaction based on half life when you have the graph of concentration versus time. And the last one, you should know how to perform the calculation by using integrated rate equations and half life. So let's continue with the half life. Half life ni apa? It is the time required for initial concentration of a reactant to decrease by half of its initial value. Let's say when you have 100 molar, so 100 molar ni adalah concentration yang awak ada untuk dia decrease kepada half of it. So half of it dia akan dapat 50 molar. So berapa masa yang diambil dekat sini itulah calculation untuk half life. Dan kita gunakan simbol T 1 over 2. So, different order of reaction will have different formula how to calculate the half-life. Let's focus with zero order reaction. Half-life ni dia related dengan integrated rate law. So, pastikan awak ingat formula untuk integrated rate law for different order of reaction. So, untuk zero order, kita ada this one. Di mana? So, you can see we have the time here. So, for half-life, time will be T half. So, when you want to substitute T half, you substitute T half into T. And then, AT, concentration ini akan jadi separuh daripada initial concentration. That's why, initial concentration over 2. So, you masukkan dalam formula ini, masuk ke dalam sini. And then, ini masuk ke dalam sini. So, you will have this one. Therefore, bila kita rearrange your half-life for zero order reaction adalah T half equals to initial concentration over 2K. So, cara mudah untuk saya ingat adalah ayam. So, ayam ada dua kaki. So, dua kaki. Ayam ke atas A over dua kaki. So, kaki kat bawah ya. So, itu cara mudah untuk ingat. So, daripada this New formula of half-life. So, for zero order reaction, kita boleh compare linear graph untuk concentration versus time. So, apa yang kita dapat, kita akan compare the size for the gap. Let's say this is the equation or formula that we got. So, T half is directly proportional to initial concentration. Dan awak boleh nampak gap dia makin kecil. Okay, makin kecil. Contoh yang kita boleh lihat untuk first half life, this one. So, dia akan touch the line here. So, we can say the time taken from here to here. X. And then, untuk second half life, dia akan touch here. So, we can say from here to here. So, you can see more bigger the half life, more smaller the gap. Iaitu gap kat sini dan juga kat sini. Dan second half life yang kita ada here, adalah separuh daripada first half life dekat sini. Therefore, we can say this is zero order reaction. So, apa kepentingan we should know about this plot of graph? Sebab sometimes soalan dia akan bagi graph dan dia minta awak determine the order of reaction. So, apa yang perlu awak faham? Sekiranya size of the gap makin kecil, makin kecil apabila half life awak bertambah, kita boleh conclude itu adalah zero order reaction. Now, let's go for first order reaction. Kita dapat this formula untuk integrated rate law. Bila awak rearrange dan awak substitute T sebagai T half, concentration A T adalah initial concentration over 2 sebab kita bahagi separuh, half life. Masukkan dalam integrated rate equation, awak akan dapat new formula untuk half life which is T half equals to ln 2 over K. So, formula ni, cara untuk saya ingat, long tu, long tu, sebutan dia macam hantu. So, hantu ada satu kaki. Sebab tu, over K. K kat bawah, kaki kat bawah. So, long tu over K. Untuk half life for first order reaction. Next one, we are going to talk about the graph. Untuk graph for first order reaction, concentration versus time, kita akan dapat curve graph. Dan kita akan compare size of the gap. Untuk kes ini, awak boleh nampak the gap 
for the time taken between two different half lives adalah sama. So, based on this formula, t half is a constant dan dia independent of initial concentration. So, tak kisahlah kalau awak ubah pun dia punya initial concentration, dia masih lagi kekal sama at different half life. Dan gap size yang kita boleh nampak adalah sama. Size dia sama. Which is the first half life equals to the second half life. Therefore, we can conclude this is the first order reaction. So, kalau ada soalan bagi graph, gap dia sama, itu adalah first order reaction. Next one, for second order reaction, we have the integrated rate law daripada previous video. Substitute macam biasa, awak akan dapat the new formula for the half life. For second order reaction is 1 over k times with initial concentration. So, cara untuk saya ingat for this one, satu orang berkaki ayam. 1 over k times with initial concentration. So, cara yang mudah kita hafal tadi, kalau untuk zero order, ayam dua kaki. Kalau first order, lon 2k, iaitu hantu ada satu kaki. And then untuk this one second order, satu orang berkaki ayam. Very easy. So, untuk second order reaction, graph yang kita dapat adalah curve graph for concentration versus time. And then kita akan compare the size of gap based on this formula. So, second order, kalau awak lihat dekat sini, first half life, second half life and third half life, dia tak ada constant half life. Ini kerana half life dia is inversely proportional to the initial concentration. Daripada sini, awak boleh nampak second half life adalah dua kali ganda daripada first half life. Then, since half life is dependent on concentration, so half life ni akan makin bertambah apabila reaction ni makin proceed. So, awak boleh nampaklah gap size dia makin besar. So, itu untuk second order reaction. Let's try example 9. Untuk example 9, you got the decomposition of SO2Cl2 dan dia dah cakap this is the first order reaction. Dia minta awak calculate the value for rate constant K at temperature 500 Kelvin sekiranya 5% of SO2Cl2 decompose dalam masa 6.75 minit. And then you have to determine the half-life. So, untuk calculate this one, kena keluarkan sedikit information. Awak ada first order reaction iaitu ln A0 over AT di mana equals to KT. Tapi untuk dapatkan nilai this one, macam mana? Sebab kita nak tentukan K. So, the value for this one daripada percentage kat sini. So, let's say initial concentration adalah the maximum it can have. So, kat sini kita ada percentage maximum adalah 100. So, this is the initial concentration. Saya gantikan A sebagai SO2Cl2. Initial concentration dia adalah 100%. Ataupun dalam value yang kecil, 1. So, kalau dia decompose 5%, maknanya 100 minus 5 yang tinggal adalah Concentration at T time iaitu 95%. Dalam nombor yang kecil, awak boleh letak 0.95. So, this value kita akan apply dalam formula this one. Pastikan awak gantikan A sebagai SO2Cl2. So, awak akan dapat this one. Saya tertinggal 2 kat sini. And then equals to KT. And then after that, awak rearrange masukkan value awak akan dapat this one. And seterusnya, kita akan dapat nilai K iaitu 7.60 eksponen negatif 3 per minit. Sebab ini adalah first order reaction untuk simbol for time dalam minutes. So, settle untuk soalan yang pertama. Soalan yang kedua, dia minta awak determine the half life for decomposition yang awak dapat. So, kita dah ada nilai K Untuk first order reaction, half-life dia adalah ln 2 over K. Hantu ada satu kaki. So, masukkan sahaja nilai yang awak ada, awak akan dapat 91.2 minutes. 
So, ini final answer for the half-life. Very easy. Let's continue one more example. Example seterusnya, you have to calculate half-life for radium if 5% of sample of radium took 2 years and half to decay. So, kena faham kat sini apabila soalan tanya tentang radiation ataupun bioactive decay must be first order. Itu tips dia. So, dalam kes ini, kita boleh tahulah this reaction is first order reaction. So, kita akan cari dulu K. So, untuk cari K, kita akan apply integrated rate law for first order reaction which is this one. And then, masukkan nilai untuk sample radium awak. Let's say, dalam percentage yang saya dah ajar tadi, kalau initial dia adalah 100%. So, untuk final concentration 80, 100 minus 5, kita akan dapat 95. So, awak akan dapat insert value like this one. And then, K equals to 0 0.02052. Then, unit dia adalah per year. Okay, sebab dia bagi dalam bentuk years. And then, kita nak half life. So, masukkan sahaja value yang awak ada. So, awak akan dapat... Half-life 33.78 years. So, this is your final answer. Now, I'm going to try the last example. Example 11, di mana awak ada this data. And then, data ini, awak kena plot the graph based on concentration versus time. Then, determine the order of reaction dan rate constant. So, I just directly plot the graph. If you got the graph paper, it's better for you to try by your own. Tapi sekarang saya dah letak saya punya plot kat sini. So, from this graph, we can see that half-life is constant and it does not depend on the initial concentration for the N2O5. Oh, kalau half-life yang constant, kita dah belajar tadi, reaction is first order reaction. And then for the second question, it asks you to determine the rate constant. So we got the formula for half-life for first order reaction, ln 2 over K. So rearrange, kita nak cari K. So mana nilai half-life kita? So let's say, untuk initial concentration kat sini awak nampak 180. So bila 180 adalah initial concentration, bila kita bahagi separuh, kita akan dapat around 90. So... Concentration untuk 90 dekat sini, saya akan ambil daripada sini kena dekat curve, turun ke bawah untuk dapatkan masa yang kita perlukan. So that's why saya letak 20 lah. Masukkan value, awak akan dapat nilai untuk rate constant 0.03 per minute sebab graf awak dalam masa in minutes. So this is the final answer. Seterusnya, kita boleh juga determine the order of reaction by using linear graph. So, how to do this? Awak kena tahu dulu formula untuk integrated rate equation for zero order, first order and second order reaction. Mesti hafal this one dulu, baru awak boleh apply dalam soalan. So, kita ada example 12 based on this part. You got the table of data based on dimerization of 1,3-butadiene at T, 600 Kelvin. So, ini adalah awak punya equal equation. And then, daripada data kat sini, dia minta awak plot the graph. So, it is better for you kalau you ada graph paper, you try to plot by your own and boleh nampaklah nilai dengan lebih tepat. And then, based on the graph, dia minta you determine the reaction order then explain. And then, calculate the value for the rate constant. So, I plotted the graph already for you so that you can understand based on the value yang kita dapat daripada table. Pastikan ada title, X axis and Y axis mesti ada label yang tepat bersama unit yang betul. And then, you can see from here, from the graph, dia menghasilkan straight line. So, bila straight line, kita agree untuk straight line hanya for integrated rate law, for second order reaction iaitu 1 over concentration A equals to KT plus 1 over initial concentration. 
So dekat sini awak boleh relate lah Y equals to MX plus C So Y awak adalah exist 1 over concentration C4H6 Sebab tu kita boleh dapat based on second order Kalau first order tak boleh Sebab first order integrated rate law dia dalam bentuk ln A T equals to negative KT plus ln a not. So tak boleh sebab graf kita kan 1 over concentration. So sebab tu the second order is the best one. Seterusnya once kita dah dapat the final answer, second order reaction awak dah explain kita teruskan dengan soalan yang kedua K which is rate constant based on gradient of the graph. So nilai K ni kita masukkan sahaja value so, value ni saya dapat daripada graf yang saya dah plot. Kalau awak plot by your own, you will get the same value close to mine. And awak akan dapat rate constant is 0.873 per molar per second. Kalau tak ingat unit, tak tulis unit, tak dapat final mark. So, this is it for the few examples of integrated rate law dan juga how to apply half-life in the formula for integrated rate law based on different order of reaction. So, summary untuk this video, walaupun agak panjang tapi sekiranya awak faham apa yang saya explain satu persatu, awak boleh try to do the tutorial question untuk familiarize with the style of question. So, dalam video ini, kita sudah belajar macam mana combination of integrated rate equation bersama dengan half-life. Dan awak juga tahu kita dapat formula yang baru dan formula itu adalah untuk half-life. Kita akan calculate the value for the half-life. Formula untuk half-life dan juga graph different for the different order of reaction. Kita ada tiga sahaja order of reaction that we will discuss in your syllabus. So that's it for this video. I hope I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.